Hello and welcome to Caspio. My name is Ned and in this video I will teach you how to create a composite key using a formula field. What is a composite key? A composite key is a unique field that allows us to combine or concatenate multiple fields to prevent duplicate entries in the database. There are a number of different ways of using a composite key in the database application. Today we will look at three of the more common examples. In the first example I will show you how to limit one submission per day in the second example, I will show you how to create a unique username by combining three different fields. And in the last example, we will look at how to prevent duplicates in a many-to-many -many relationship. So let's take a look at our first example. I want to be able to limit only one submission per day. And to accomplish something like this, we're going to use the email field and the date submitted field. And we're going to concatenate those two fields together inside a formula field. So let's create an additional field inside our table and call it avoid same date. I'm going to change the data type to formula and make sure you check the box here for unique. This is going to prevent duplicates inside this table. Click on the edit link to the right and let's add those two fields that we're trying to merge together. So the first field I'm going to add is the email field. Then I'm going to add a plus sign and I'm going to insert my date field. Use the plus sign to concatenate two fields together. If you try to verify the formula now, you'll see that it won't work correctly. It's an invalid formula. That's because we can't perform string operations on date fields. So what we have to do is use SQL syntax to convert the date field to a string object. Now same thing applies also with number of fields if you wish to convert them to string as well. So how do we fix this? We're going to use a convert function. Then we're going to add two parentheses to wrap the date field. Right before the field, what you want to do is insert something called varchar. This is for string operations. Then add a comma. And after the field, add another comma and then add 101. 101 is going to be used for US date format. So if you want the date to appear as month, day, and then year, use 101. If you want to have more of a European format, then use either 103 or 104 if you want it to appear as day, month, and then year. It just depends on what kind of format you wish to have displayed inside the table. Let's try to verify the formula again. It looks valid. Click on apply. Let's save our changes. Now you could build a form to add information to this table, but I'm actually going to go inside a data sheet tab and add my entries manually. So let's have John Doe. This will be my email, test.com. I'm going to add some comments. Let's put NA. Let's have today's date. And then let's click on the second row. Notice how the formula field combined both of those data values. So we have the email and we also have the date side by side. Now let's try to add another comment as John Doe. More comments. Let's use the same date. So now notice that I'm using the same email and the same date. And this is a formula field that's preventing duplicates. So if I try to add this entry to my table, you will see the error message that you get inside a table. But if you were to build a form and you try to submit that form with the same information, it's also going to get rejected. So that's the whole idea. If you try to submit the same date, with the same email twice, it's going to get rejected because the formula field is set to unique and it's not going to accept the combination of those two values more than once. However, if let's say John submits this tomorrow or yesterday and you click on the third row, you will see how that entry now is allowed because we have a combination of different values. And now let's go ahead and take a look at our second example. So in the second example, what I want to do is create a unique username which will be a combination of three different fields. I'm going to use the first name, the last name, and also the employee PIN number. So let's create the formula field. Let's change the data type to formula. Set the field to unique to prevent duplicates, and then click on the edit link to the right. And in this example, what I would like to do is create something a little bit more unique. Let's grab the first character of the person's first name, the entire last name, along with the employee PIN number. So now how do I grab just the first character of the person's first name? To accomplish that, we're going to use a text function called left. 
And what this function allows you to do is grab however many characters you want starting from the left. So let's select that function and in between the parentheses we're going to insert the first name field. After the field name we're going to insert a comma and then a number for however many characters you want from that field. So let's add one because I'm only interested in the first character of the person's first name. Then we're going to insert the plus sign to concatenate the last name. So let's insert the last name field as well. And also we want the employee pin. Now remember what I said before. If you're going to use a number data type, you also want to convert that to a string. So in order for this to work correctly, we need to insert a convert function. Then we need to add our parentheses to wrap the employee pin field. Right before the field, we need to add varchar for string operation, and then a comma, and then your field name. Now for number data types, you don't need to actually add another comma and then 101 because those only pertain to date fields if you want a specific format. When you're done, very simply just click on Verify Formula. It looks valid. Click on Apply. Save your changes. And let's add some entries manually by going directly inside the Datasheet tab. And let's start with John Doe. John's employee pin can be 111. Email can be john at test.com. We have some comments. And let's use today's date. And as soon as you click on the second row, take a look and see what the formula field is doing. It's grabbing the first character of the person's first name, combining it with the last name, and also combining that with the PIN number. And because this formula field is set to unique, you can never have the same username twice appear in the same table. So if I add somebody else, for example, Sally Smith, 222, Sally at test.com, and let's use the same date. Click on the third row, and there's your second username. If you are submitting this via a form, you'll get the same behavior. If you try to submit the form with the same first name, same last name, and the same PIN number, it's going to get rejected because that information already exists in the table. What's nice about having a unique username is you can use this inside the authentication screen. So rather than logging in with the email, you can create a unique username to accomplish the same thing. And now let's move on to our last example. I have created three tables for this last example. We have a table of classes, we have a table of students, and in the third table, which is a joining table between them, we want to be able to see what student belongs to what class. Let's take a look at our classes table first. Notice that in this table I have bio and chemistry, and each class has its own unique primary key. Now let's go back to the tables menu. Let's take a look at the students table. And this table contains two students. We have Sammy and we have Brian, and each student also has their own unique primary key. So now the idea is to take those primary keys and stamp them inside the joining table, which is this third table. And this will allow us to be able to track and see what student belongs to what class. Now we want to prevent duplicates in this table because I only want to assign one student per class. So to do that, once again, we have to go to table design, and we need to add a new field to our table. Let's call it, very simply, avoid duplicates. We're going to change that field data type to a formula. Make sure you set that field to unique. Click on the edit link. And let's add both the class ID and the student ID side by side. Don't forget to add the plus sign between the fields. Click on the verify formula button. It looks valid. Click on apply and then just very simply save your changes. Once you add this formula field in this table, you're never going to be able to submit the same combination of IDs to this table. So it's always going to be one student ID per class ID. To test the functionality, I have created a data page. Let's click preview. And let's go ahead and add some students to classes. So I'm going to select bio. And I'll select Brian as my first student. Hit submit. Submission was successful. Now let's see what happens if I try to add Brian to the same class. So once again, I'll select biology. Select Brian. Hit submit. And you're going to get an error message letting you know that this student has already been added to this class. 
that formula field is combining the class ID with the student ID and it's never going to let you create a duplicate inside that table. So you're never going to see that same combination of IDs repeating twice inside a table. Let me show you what's happening inside a table object. So let's open up this table. And here's the ID for biology and here's the ID for Brian. And you can see how the formula field was able to concatenate both of those data values together. Now if I try to add the same class with the same student, it's not going to let me because this combination of IDs already exists in this table. Let's add one more student to a different class. Let's try chemistry. Brian, maybe Brian is assigned to two different classes. Hit submit, refresh the table, and you can see a different class ID with the same student ID, but the formula field does allow me to add that entry to this table because it's not the same combination of IDs as the one above. This concludes our tutorial on composite keys. Thank you for watching. If you have any additional questions or would like to speak to our team about your application needs, give us a quick call. For additional videos and tutorials on how to use Caspio, keep it right here on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe for any of the latest tips and tricks on how to use Caspio.